is bullshit. So basically, your business is death, and that must be bittersweet for you. Exactly. Because you're like, I'm going to profit right, exactly. from this. Exactly. But it's sad because, oh. Exactly. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Hope you're all doing really well today. This TikTok says how thins expect us to react when they call us fat. And she's making some kind of little angry face. I'd like to know from anyone who's ever been fat if being referred to in group form as fats is unproblematic. I know there's some people in this movement who openly say they want to be called fat, but to me that's different than fats versus thins. Thins to me sounds like you're trying to be intentionally disrespectful to people of a certain body type. And it sort of leads me into something I've wanted to discuss. I see so much content about the way fat people are portrayed in media, but let's talk about the mean girl archetype. If you just close your eyes and think mean girl, obviously the movie itself comes to mind. And the type of girl that comes to mind is probably thin and pretty. And that's not some fantasy attitude. A lot of girls and some guys assume that more attractive girls are meaner or unapproachable or stupid even. Think Legally Blonde. I think sometimes people are really mean to the hot popular girl. And I'm not denying that there are plenty of benefits to being perceived as pretty. Plenty of benefits. My only point is that there's actually no identity, no master status that protects you from being judged in this world. Judging people has utility. It becomes problematic when you're unable to ground yourself outside of your own judgments and you act like a worse human because of them. You know, it's the fact that a woman who is a size 12 will come on this app and be like, don't worry about society. Don't worry about if you think he won't like your body. Just be confident. This is that energy I feel when I hear the word thins. Oh, is a girl with no belly talking? Easy for you to say skinny bitch! <laughs> oh, okay. So we're just gonna skip right over the fact that no matter how confident you are, no matter how much you love yourself, that's not gonna stop people from perceiving you in a particular type of way. You're absolutely right. She is so right, and I wish she would just listen to her own wisdom here. Everyone is going to perceive you in their own unique way. We can't control the version of ourselves that's in other people's minds. Even when you're conventionally attractive, thin, muscular, able-bodied, whatever it is, none of us get full control over how others perceive us. This is the thing that really activates my fight or flight. People don't want to have this conversation with fat people. They don't want to have the hard conversation of, yeah, people don't deem you as valuable. People don't perceive you as worth putting an effort into. Men don't see you as worth actually going on real dates with, actually putting an effort to. They're going to be like, yo, you want to fuck? That's the real hard conversation that they don't want to have with us. Can we just talk this out? I actually do want to have this conversation, but for whatever reason, I actually feel like she wouldn't want to hear what I had to say. Oh, is a girl with no belly talking? I feel like what she's really focused on here is much more how being fat affects your dating life and romantic prospects, and I know it does. I just know a myriad of other social and physical characteristics affect dating as well. It's not easy for most people. And something I think is kind of interesting is a lot of her TikToks and TikToks like these, I hear a good amount of overlap with what I read on Reddit, nice girls or nice guys. The weird assertion that men, women, people are all one way and only like one thing. And if you aren't that, then you don't stand a chance. And I don't know how to say this, but if you just look around at couples in public, it's not just a bunch of supermodels coupled up living their best Barbie and Ken lives. It's more like anything goes, we all have a chance. Love is blind out here. There's literally shows about dating inmates, like you can end someone's life and there's still options out there for you in this world, maybe more even. 
this is a good example of how real culture versus ideal culture affects our perceptions. It's funny that the ideal is often more influential than reality. Ah, so romantic. Here's a fart coming up, especially for you. There you go. All the best. Bye-bye. Did you really just fart? First of all, just gross. I'm sorry, but I'm never going to think that someone farting into their phone is a good look. No, don't like that. But I do think it's funny that this is the second video in a week where we see someone in the fat acceptance movement choosing to respond to a comment about the health benefits of not being obese with either a fart or a fart noise. This comment in particular says, Becoming obese is a failure, hugely so. It ruined my life. I've lost 80 kilograms in a year now, and I'm aggressively fat phobic. And yeah, failure is a harsh word, but other than that, what could she really argue with? It makes no sense for her to deny that this formerly obese person losing weight would have health benefits. So instead, she farts into her phone because that's basically the equivalent of any defense she would have come up with anyways. And actually not sure if everyone knows this, but she used to be much heavier and lost a lot of weight and then put some back on, but not all. So I think that sort of adds an interesting layer to all of her content. This comment basically says, even if I liked you, I wouldn't donate to you because I can't in good conscience enable someone's food addiction by giving them money. I can show you these hands. And she has a newsflash for all of us, which is we're all addicted to food. And even if we all ate the same, fat people would still exist. And this is just kind of wild to me. Food addiction is a real thing, and I'm not saying she has it, I don't know her or her lifestyle, but a lot of people do have food addiction, and when I've listened to them describe it, I feel really bad for them. It's unique because we all have to eat to survive. We don't have to drink alcohol or smoke but we do have to eat. So overcoming this addiction takes hard work. I really can't imagine. And she's just making a joke out of it basically by saying we're all addicted to food. No, having to eat food to live is not the same thing as being addicted to it. And most people I know aren't addicted to it. And then to say that if we all ate the same, fat people would still exist. It's just another way of belittling the role that any one person could play in their own weight gain. I can't be held responsible for my ass. As a personal trainer, here are my thoughts on clean eating. First of all, what is it? It is the notion, bullshit lie. Guess what time it is? <laughs> that you can eat clean by consuming things like whole foods and avoiding processed foods, which are basically like convenience foods. For some diehard clean eaters, this might also mean cutting out entire food groups, which are carbs, sugar, you know, whatever diet culture demonizes. If you just pay attention to your own personal diet and how it affects you, you don't have to constantly refer to big, bad, evil diet culture to figure out what's good and what's bad. Why is it BS? Because there is no such thing as eating clean unless you've rolled your apple around in dog poo. And so then why is clean eating problematic? Because it also implies that one can eat dirty. You can't. And we therefore add stigma to food and stigmatize those who are, you know, eating dirty. Eating dirty is not a thing. This is so overdramatic. Clean eating or whole foods eating isn't a decision that people make so they have some form of moral superiority over those around them. It's a health decision. It's about wanting to live longer in a healthier state of being. The fad of eating clean is also basically daylight robbery because we're shamed and guilt tripped into parting with our hard earned money for extortionately priced foods that make us think we're being good. How many times can I do this today? but it's not highway robbery for you to be convinced to hand over your hard earned money for say some Taco Bell that's barely one grade above dog food. Despite the fact that food has no moral value and cannot make us morally superior. There you go. That is why clean eating is bullshit.
So basically, your business is deaf, and that must be bittersweet for you. Exactly. Because you're like, I'm going to profit right, exactly. from this. Exactly. But it's sad because, oh. Exactly. So some of us have talked about it in the comments, but I'm just going to say it. She gets me almost more than a lot of the other creators we watch. I really cannot understand her whole page, and I personally don't believe that she lives in alignment with the advice that she's giving out. Obviously, I don't know anything about her. It's just my opinion. So here she's acting like eating fruits and vegetables is the same thing as eating McDonald's every single day. I don't know about clean eating versus dirty eating. It doesn't need to be phrased like that. For us to acknowledge that some food has great nutritional value while other foods barely provide any nutritional value and are often detrimental to our health. I don't know why, as a personal trainer, she's denying that certain meals make you feel different in the gym even. Nutrition is really fascinating, and our understanding of the way food affects us on biochemical levels is a real science. So again, it's just bizarre to me that all of her content is basically delegitimizing that. Also, you don't need to assign moral value to food choices. I agree, but I think you start assessing yourself when you feel or acknowledge that you're not actually in control of your choices anymore. Thank you so much for coming to hang out on another video. Let me know what you thought down below. Extra thank you if you are still here, you made it this far and you're still listening. I really appreciate all the comments I've got about the concern for my future mental health as I begin the dive into Amberlynn Reed. I'm really, really curious at this point, so there's no way I'm not gonna do it, but I appreciate the concern. <laughs> That's the end of the video for today, but I'll see you all in the next one.